It is exciting to have the holiday movie season here. It's great to talk about and preview some of the blockbusters, but it can be just as interesting to talk about what the blockbusters mean in terms of the movie industry, especially after the writer strike has been settled and the actor strike has been settled. But um, normally you're talking about big action movies this time of year. And right now we're talking mainly about a movie about Leonard Bernstein and the reviews are just phenomenal. So I thought that in this segment of Hot Media, we would uh, just talk about what's coming out during the month of December. We're now doing, of course, a monthly podcast. This is the December episode. And when I talk about movies, these are the two guys who I bring on. Ryan Rolandelli, who is a finishing editor at a post-production house in New York City. And Chris Mann Nelson, who is the host of the Movie Quiz, which is an internet uh, movie quiz, which I have won only once, even though I play it every single week. Uh, Ryan can credit himself and his wife with winning a lot. What would you say your uh, record is right now, Ryan? He's what actually got Chris has got a lot better team since early 2020. So we, we are not the powerhouse that we used to be. So we're probably slipping into like the 500 sub 500 range now. Well, it's a lot better than me. At least I'll have the one win if the series ever goes off. I'll know that I had won at yeah, least. Yeah, you got that in your pocket. Yeah. At one time, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm not uh, the Seattle Mariners. You like a guy, like a like a guy who relives the the high school football game. That's right. That's right. It was the greatest moment of my life, and I will be yeah. doing it over and over and over again. So let's talk a little bit about all of the talk about Maestro because this. I, everything I've read, uh, reviews in the New York Times are tremendously positive. Bradley Cooper said it was a labor of love. He spent six years on it as writer and director and actor. Just for a movie like this, though, um, being in the theaters only until, well, exclusively in the theaters only till December 20th, and now it go, then it will go on Netflix, makes me wonder if what became the model of movies during the pandemic is here to stay. I'd like to hear what each of you has to say about that. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say that you're right. I think that model brought to us by COVID, uh, I, I would think is here to stay. Um, and myself included, as I, I said before we were on, how I am also waiting till December 20th to see this movie. Not that I avoid going to movies for any certain specific reason, but my tally of, of theater going per year it's definitely, definitely gone down. Looking forward to this movie, looking forward to seeing it, but it will be from my couch. And I don't see that changing in the near future. I think, you, what does this say, though, Chris, about, you know, their total gross and things of that nature? Go ahead. Well, I mean, I think that it's definitely it's definitely here to say insofar as audience expectation. Like, I know that I um, like you know, I'm, I have two kids now and it's like, I, when I'm not going, to, I'm not going to the movies nearly as much as I, you know, as I once was. And so it is helpful. Like I've just today, this is uh, being recorded at the very end of November. And I just finally saw Barbie last night. Like I, I just finally saw it. Um, but I, there's a couple of things that I think could impact, um, like, cause I think that they're kind of, they're kind of lost in the wilderness when it comes to, uh, the entire pipeline, uh, of, of released, like th from theatrical to when it's going to hit streaming to when it's going to hit physical media to when it's like the fact that it's like, like, like the Ninja Turtles movie. Uh, one of the few things I did see in the theaters this year, cause I have two kids. Uh, it was out in August. Then it was it was before you could even buy the digital copy. It was on Paramount like three weeks after, like by the end of August and it, the Blu-ray doesn't come out until like a week before Christmas. So it's like, what, what is happening? Uh, it's, it's, it's bonkers confusing. And like Indiana Jones is coming out on that. Disney plus like four days before the Blu-ray and physical media is like dying a, a very rapid death. It's on, it's like, it's like uh, in an iron lung and they're like, like why put it on Disney plus first, like especially for a movie that lost $250 million or whatever, just like milk every bit of it. But the only, the, the only two things I think could change 
um could could you could see more mid-budget um stuff or or prestige stuff uh ditching the the short theatrical window extending the theatrical window to a more traditional model is one um 2023 uh with like showed that people are like really sick of uh big uh big superhero spectacle you know um uh f every everything tanked like the flash tanked mm -hmm. uh, uh fast fast x tanked like all the big all the the free money for the studios all cratered bad and then barbie and oppenheimer made raked in tons of cash so like that and then the the wall that they'll hit once the the strikes kick in once the strikes start to really affect the pipeline, they're going to need to, you know, stretch that out with movies that will be in production less time, uh, more of a, more of a mid budget, easy, quicker turnaround, less VFX. Yeah. Um, so I think those two things, maybe by next year, 2025, you might see sort of, um, a bit of the shedding of the, um, the COVID release model. Um, in my hand right here, you see my uh, SAG after uh, ballot card. It would just uh, I'm covering up my pin number here. And in the monologue that opened up this episode, I talked about the end of the SAG strike and what my vote is going to be. You have to vote before December 5th. So a lot of you listening to this, this has already passed. But there is all of this joy in mass media world about... Um, having the writer strike over and sag over with but there's a lag isn't there like a lot of the impact on the viewing audience is yet to come yeah i i think people weren't the, the common viewer wasn't sure what was going on uh, a lot with the strikes and a lot of people a lot of my peers didn't even know that there was an actor strike they knew that the writer mm -hmm. strike that got a lot more coverage earlier but they didn't know that the actors were on strike um so i think a lot of these movies coming out this winter and early of next year we're already in the can already good to go maybe mm -hmm. uh some slight delays and restructuring but we are still seeing these movies on track of what we were going to see right. yeah because i mean uh, as far as i understand it they could be they just couldn't be uh rewritten on set if they were shooting or uh, obviously no reshoots or pickups uh, but they could be edited yeah. like yeah like the 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 post the post production pipeline as, aside from rewrites or reshoots i don't think was affected so yeah if it was but yeah we're gonna see it's gonna be a staggered effect um which is which is why i think it's possible you might see some smaller budget stuff get kind of pumped through um quickly to like to fill out the slate because it it has a much you know, like a movie like uh, what was a big effect, like Jurassic World takes, you know, three years to put yeah. together. But like, right. but yeah, you could do a, a bring back the mid budget comedy, mm -hmm. crank it out in like f four months if they were really motivated. I, one of the movies <laughs> coming out this uh, winter, the Aquaman movie, like another big budget movie that was always scheduled to come out this winter. But as the strikes were looming and kept on going, I was like, there's no way. They're not going to have Jason Momoa on the red carpet promoting this movie. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought they were going to delay, but they never did. And you know, everything wrapped up. Thank God. But yeah. Well, you know, maybe with fewer Marvel movies, I might have a better chance at the movie quiz too. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. That's, you know, and I've been to them. I, they just don't stick with me. <laughs> now, pretty steamy. When you um, talk about what's coming out though, in holiday December twenty three. Beyonce's film, Renaissance, and as Taylor Swift had tremendous success with um, the uh, performance movie. Yeah, Eras. We, yeah, we had all the way back into the 70s, the early 70s, um, the Woodstock was, was a film, the Woodstock performance movie. Is this something that is a trend or is this simply that it's the two biggest stars in the world when you're talking about products put out by Taylor Swift and Beyonce? I think what we may see, I I assume that Renaissance will do very well in the box office. Uh, I think what we may see are some smaller artists getting the bump to have these big movies come out that may not end up doing so well. 
Uh, but I think you said about like, yeah, these two absolute superstars putting out these movies. Yes, they will have success. I think Ever's just passed 250 million worldwide. Uh, yes, especially for like, I mean, I as far as like historically, if it's a trend, I feel like it got it. There's like like any movie trend. I feel like there's I, you'll see like clusters of them, yeah. like in like the early. I and I think it's like because I remember there was like a there was like a Jonas Brothers and a Justin Bieber uh, in like 2011 or so. They they both had con concert films. And if right. you, um, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like back then and now with uh, Beyonce's tour and Taylor Swift's tour, those are really expensive concert tickets. Uh, so a lot of people probably didn't get to go. It's the only for, way you can actually like experience bucks, it. You go to the theater that. and you get to like not pretend you were there, but you know. Feels yes, some good anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, now, what does seem like a typical December movie release, Wonka. But why do we need another Willy Wonka movie? It's so Ooh. I I don't know. I, I I watched the second trailer today and it looked a little better. Uh, like also I didn't realize it was from the director of Paddington, which I love. Paddington is Both great really well so i i'm i'm interested to see how this one does because yeah those two movies are i would say great i never saw them but i've heard nothing but good things they are mm -hmm. they they are legit great the paddington yeah. movies but like and some of it like looked it looked charming but then yeah i can't shake i still have this just like nagging undercurrent of just like what why i don't uh also it's just like um it's more explaining what Willy like Willy Wonka is supposed to be just like an oddball who I don't want to know where he comes yeah. from. I don't <laughs> want every like every little thing explained. Tim Burton did that with that like mm. third at that interminable ending of his Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And it's just like, no, I don't need to see how he like became like went from like being a chocolate busker on the street it looks like is what he's he's like selling chocolate on the street um so like yeah finding oompa loompas i don't i don't care I, yeah, <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't not a backstory that. we really need or want to know um now napoleon of course is a movie that you know the big lavish blockbuster but uh does not exactly seem to be uh, gaining traction among the critics now it's hanging on pretty steadily at 60% raw tomatoes. So it's, it's just there. Right. Is it really? Um, yeah. I should just look that up. Um, really Scott is, is a legend, but he has some swings and misses. Um, yeah. I will watch Napoleon, hopefully for a cheap rental on my couch one day, in the not so distant future. Um, uh, but I, I feel like this, I kept on thinking of the movie, uh, Valkyrie that, that got like, all this backlash for not having anyone do any sort of German accent. I feel like no one's even doing <laughs> yeah. the same thing here. Really, Scott's like, you know, we're not even trying. Yeah. When I looked up Napoleon on IMDb, there's a Napoleon biopic in 1927, which is kind of yeah. Amazing. I mean, they've made they're been almost 100 years apart. They've been a ton. They've been an absolute ton. Uh, now. Not count, not even counting Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. That's true. That's true. Napoleon at the water park. Um, yeah. But anything before we uh, finish the segment that you guys are looking forward to at least uh, seeing, if not enjoying, uh, during the course of this holiday movie season? I, American Fiction is one, which Jeffrey Wright definitely want to see. Love Jeffrey Wright. I think maybe an Oscar nomination for him. He could be busy this award season. Uh, May, December. Uh, with Natalie Portman and uh, what did I say before? Uh, oh, the Iron Claw, the uh, about the wrestling Von Eric brothers with uh, some very popular actors, Efron and Jeremy Allen White. All right. Well, Chris, anything that um, is jumping out at you yet? No, nothing's really no, nothing's uh, lighting a fire under me. Exactly. I mean, there's there's a bunch of I'm always like I need to catch up usually. And, that you know, like and that's why I'm of two minds about the the, mm -hmm. the quick release streaming uh, model because I feel there's like a greedy part of me that's like, hell yeah, release it now. So I can like, I don't coordinating a whole, like going to the movies is like a whole thing for me until the kids are older. But like at the same time, I'm like, I know that this is 
this is a big part of why we ended up with nothing but terrible loud movies uh made by some faction of disney filling up the entire multiplex board you know like it's that uh, you know we're the we're, we're not going nobody's seeing those for it's a chicken and egg we're not presented with, with the opportunity to see them but we're also when they're there we're not seeing them and i'm part of that problem uh so it's yeah it's tricky but yeah I, a lot of these things i um i wait i do wait for Sometimes it's good to wait, even for a movie like Maestro. I'm very excited to see it as soon as it drops on Netflix. But by the time the Astros come around, I will be like burnt out on that movie and like mm -hmm. I think that I haven't really like it that much. Like I get so into the award season, watch everything. By the time the actual Astros come around, I'm very much like burnt out. Yeah. You know, Chris, you mentioned a couple of times that you have two kids. And um, how many Scooby Doo movies have you now seen? Uh, um uh <laughs> zero zero because scooby-doo uh is is the free babysitter currently oh uh, scooby-doo is how nice. i can go and wash the dishes a flickering so light to keep the market <laughs> yes. okay. yeah, heard a lot I, of the I, i've heard a lot of scooby-doo <laughs> movies from the other room while i'm getting stuff done but uh scene not not that many well, listen, I appreciate you guys coming on anytime we talk about movies. And uh, yeah. I do like to, in addition to talking about the movies themselves, talk about what they mean uh, to the entire industry. So thank you very much for your time and being back here on Hot Media after a long hiatus that we had for the show. Uh, Ryan uh, Rolandelli and Chris Van Nelson, thank you guys. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you.